This is just a sample from our System Center 2016 Virtual Machine Manager training on ITDVDs.com. For complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com where we go over Virtual Machine Manager 2016 in depth, as well as have a lot more training on Hyper-V and Windows Server 2016, including certification training and practice tests. And as a member, you get access to all of it. So let's begin the sample. The requirements for Virtual Machine Manager 2016 are it needs to be installed on Windows Server 2016. It can be a core or GUI installation, but it cannot be Windows Server 2016 Nano. The computer must be a member of an Active Directory domain. It can be installed on a virtual machine, but if we're using dynamic memory on that virtual machine, we need to set it to a minimum of 2 gigs. Most likely we want to set it higher than that, though. Shouldn't install it on a server that is also a Hyper-V host. So if we're on a server that has the Hyper-V role installed, we don't want to put Virtual Machine Manager on that same server. It could, of course, be a virtual machine on that Hyper-V host, but again, not on the host operating system. The computer name needs to not exceed 15 characters, and there is a SQL Server database backend to Virtual Machine Manager. That SQL Server needs to run SQL Server 2012 SP1 or higher, and that can be installed on the Virtual Machine Manager server, or it can be a remote SQL Server. Now, as far as what Virtual Machine Manager 2016 supports, it can support Hyper-V hosts that are Windows Server 2012 R2 and above. It can also support 2016 Nano Hyper-V hosts, but this is important to know because this doesn't go back very far. So the Server 2012 Hyper-V hosts are not supported. As far as the VMware side of things that are supported, it's going to be ESX or ESXi 5.5 or 6.0. And as far as guest operating systems goes, any guest operating system that's supported by the host is also supported by Virtual Machine Manager 2016, and that is the host that it's managing. There's also the Virtual Machine Manager 2016 console that we're going to use to actually administer our Virtual Machine Manager environment. That console can be installed on Windows 8.1 and above, or on the server side, Windows Server 2008 R2 with SP1 or above. So I'm on Microsoft's website here, and let's talk about the hardware that we want to use. And there are two major components here, the VMM server and the database part of it. The library is important, but it's going to use up a lot less resources. So the Virtual Machine Manager server, the minimum we're looking at is 8 cores at 2 gigahertz. And most likely we'll want more than that. The recommended is 16 core at 2.66 gigahertz. For RAM, minimum is going to be 4 gigs, recommended 16 gigs and hard drive space, realistically, 10 gigs. And for the database side of things, the minimum is going to be 8 core, 2.8 gigs, gigahertz. The recommended is going to be 16 core, 2.6 gigahertz. For RAM, 8 gigs minimum, 16 gigs recommended, and hard drive space, we're probably going to want 15 gig 50 gigs minimum, but more than that, 200 gigs is recommended. Now let's talk about the placement of Virtual Machine Manager. So where do we want to install it? And where do we want to install it to? Do we want to install it on a physical host or a virtual machine? And do we want to make it standalone or highly available? Highly available is going to be necessary if we have a lot of clients that depend on using Virtual Machine Manager, and spe specifically the Virtual Machine Manager console. Because if we have to reboot the Virtual Machine Manager server or anything like that, it's not as though the hosts lose their redundancy or the virtual machine stop running. It's just we lose the ability to manage those hosts or virtual machine through virtual machine manager but once the machine reboots that virtual machine manager is installed on then we can administer our environment again so it's generally not super critical again unless we have a lot of users that need to use the virtual machine manager console but highly available is definitely an option for installation and we're going to go over how to do that now installing virtual machine manager on a virtual machine is definitely a great option but we want to be careful about installing virtual machine manager on a virtual machine that's a host that Virtual Machine Manager is managing. Because if something happens with that particular environment, then we cannot get to Virtual Machine Manager to try to fix the problem or see what's going on. Ideally, we'd have another environment that had a Hyper-V host where we could install Virtual Machine Manager too. In that way, if all the hosts and clusters that Virtual Machine was managing if they had problem, let's say that there's storage issues or networking issues or something like that, then we can still get to Virtual Machine Manager to try to see what's going on and fix the problem because our separate environment, it wouldn't be affected by that particular issue, hopefully. And this definitely goes for the SQL Server part of this as well because 
if we got virtual machine manager somewhere else, but the database back end is a virtual machine on what virtual machine is managing, then, well, if we have a problem with the database, virtual machine manager isn't going to work either. So we want to be real careful about where we place and install virtual machine manager. I'm on a domain controller and we could do this remotely as well. We're just going to create an account in Active Directory for Virtual Machine Manager so that it can manage all the different hosts. So let's go to Tools. I'm going to launch my Active Directory Users and Computers. And we could create this really anywhere we want. I've got a Phoenix OU and a Service Counts OU, so I'm going to create it in there. Let's go to New. And I'm going to select User. I'm going to give this one a name. And I'll just call it VMM Service. I'll go ahead and use that for my user logon name. Let's go ahead and click Next. I'll give it a password. And I'll just go ahead and uncheck User Must Change Password Next Logon. I'm going to check Password Never Expires so that the password doesn't expire. If it did, then when it expired, my virtual machine manager would stop working. We don't want that. So I'll go ahead and click Next and Finish to create the account. I'm on a server named SCVMM01. This is the server I'm going to be using for my virtual machine manager installation. And we need to make that VMM service account that we created in Active Directory a local administrator on this particular computer. So we could use the net local group administrators, specify our service account name, and slash add, and that will do that. It will add this account to the local administrators group on this computer. If we wanted to do it remotely, we could go over to like a Windows 10 machine and run our computer management. If we're not familiar with how to use the GUI tools to administer a server core installation, please see the Windows Server 2016 administration training on itdbds.com. So we'll need to right click, connect to another computer. In order to do that, it's just opening up firewall rules, or excuse me, enabling firewall rules. So we're going to connect to SCVMM01. Let's expand out our system tools, local users and groups. And let's go to groups. There's our administrators group. And we could just add the user this way. So VMM service. Click OK. And click OK to add it. Next, we're going to want to give permissions for that VMM service account on the SQL server that we're going to use. So I'm going to use a SQL server named DB03. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio and connect to it. All right, I'll connect to DB03. So we do have the option to actually create the Virtual Machine Manager database ahead of time. And when we do that, we just create a blank database. We're going to give the or grant the DB owner permission to that VMM service account. And then when we go through the Virtual Machine Manager setup, it will allow us to select that blank database we created. The advantage of doing that is we can specify where the database files are actually located on the file system of our database server or we can actually create the database during the VMM setup. So I'm going to do that, but either way we need to go to security, logins, let's right click and go to new login. So now let's go ahead and search and for location let's add our, select our domain here and we'll add our VMM service account. Click OK and let's go up here to server roles if we're going to create the database with the installation of Virtual Machine Manager, we need to check the box for DB Creator. But regardless of whether we create it now or through the installation, we need to select Process Admin and Security Admin. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Great, now that service account has the appropriate permissions it needs to create the database if necessary and also administer the database. Next, we're going to create a container in Active Directory for distributed key management. So Virtual Machine Manager encrypts some data in the VMM database by using the Data Protection Application Programming Interface. And those keys that are used to encrypt the data, if we don't store them in Active Directory as well and we have to move Virtual Machine Manager or Virtual Machine Manager is part of a cluster, then the other node or the other machine won't be able to access that data. So we're going to use ADSI Edit to do this. So I'm going to go to Tools, launch my ADSI Edit, and I'll just right-click, Connect to. We're going to connect to the default naming context. Go ahead and click OK. We can expand it out. And we can create this container anywhere we want. I'm just going to go ahead and create it at the root here of my domain. I'll right-click on it. Let's go to New, Object, and we want to select Container. 
Go ahead and click Next. Let's give it a value. I'm just going to call it VMM DKM. Now I'll go ahead and click on Finish. And there it is. Let's right click on it, go to Properties, and go up to the Security tab. Now let's go to Advanced here. And let's go ahead and highlight our domain admins. Click on Edit. And we're going to change this from this object only to this object and all descendant objects. Let's go ahead and click OK. And next we're going to add, let's click on Select a Principal. Let's add our VMM service account. Let's give it full control. And again, we're going to select this object and all descendant objects. And let's go ahead and click OK. And click OK. Let's go to Attribute Editor. And this distinguished name here, if I click on View, we're going to need to know this for our installation of Virtual Machine Manager so it knows what container we're using for our distributed key management. So if we want, we could go ahead and copy this right now so that we have it ready. I'm on SCVMM01. This is the server we're going to be installing Virtual Machine Manager on. Probably the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure it's up to date. So I'm going to go ahead and run sconfig. And I can run number six here to download and install updates. I've already done that, so everything's up to date. I'll go ahead and run 15 to exit to a command line. Now we're going to need to install some prerequisites on this server before we can actually install Virtual Machine Manager. So let's go over to here to a desktop with a browser. One of the first things we're going to need to install is the Windows 10 ADK. And I'm going to just download the latest one, version 1703. And we can just search for that and download it. It's free. Next, we're going to want to download the Microsoft ODBC driver 11. So I've actually already done that. As well as the Microsoft Command Line Utilities 11. And we can get both of these from the Microsoft SQL Server 2014 feature pack. So we can just search for that. If we expand out install instructions, it allows us to download the, those individually. We just have to scroll down and find them and we want to download the 64-bit version. So I've already done that actually and copied them over to the C drive of SCVMM01. I put those in the SQL Utilities folder in the Windows 10 ADK. So now let's go back over to SCVMM01 and I'm just going to change directory to my Installers folder. So let's go into our SQL Utilities folder and first I'm going to install the ODBC driver. So I'm going to do a dot backslash msodbc sql.msi. We'll go ahead and run it. Let's click on next, accept the terms, next again. And we just need the client components, we don't need the SDK. And click on install. Okay, so that one's installed. Next we're going to run the MS SQL command line utilities. So go ahead and hit enter, click next, again accept the terms, click next, and install. Okay, those two were installed. Now I'll just go back a directory, and let's go into our Windows 10 ADK directory where I downloaded the Windows 10 ADK, and we're going to run the ADK setup. So again, dot backslash ADK setup dot exe. We can select where we want to install it to. I'll just install it to the default location and accept the terms. And we actually just need the deployment tools and the Windows PE, Windows pre-installation environment. So we can uncheck all the other stuff. Let's go ahead and click Next. And it'll go ahead and install. Okay, and the installation's complete. So now we have the necessary prerequisites to install Virtual Machine Manager. So I've gone ahead and downloaded the installer for Virtual Machine Manager, it's System Center 2016, and then part of that is the Virtual Machine Manager download. And I've copied it over to my SCVMM1 machine at C installers. So let's go over to SCVMM01, and we're just going to change directory to our installers directory. And there it is, System Center VMM 2016. 
And we just want to run this sc2016 underscore scvmm dot exe. We can use a dot backslash. Go ahead and run it. And just go through the wizard. This just extracts it. I've already extracted it to the default location, which is in C System Center 2016 Virtual Machine Manager. And we want to run the setup.exe. So dot backslash setup.exe. Let's click on install. And we'll go ahead and check the box for VMM management server. Let's go ahead and click next. We've got a product key. We can go ahead and enter it. Go ahead and click next. Accept the terms. Click next. Next again. And we can use Microsoft Update to get our virtual machine manager updates. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Click next. Specify the location where we want to install it to. Click next. Now, where's our SQL Server? Mine is DB03 that we're going to use for our virtual machine manager database. I'm using the default port so I don't have to specify anything. If we change the port on our SQL Server, we want to specify it here. Check the box. I'm going to use my VMM service account to connect to it. And I'll go ahead and type in the password. If I've got multiple instances on that particular server, I'd want to specify the instance. I'm using the default. I'm going to go ahead and create a new database, but if we already created the database, we'd want to go ahead and select existing database and then select that particular database. Let's go ahead and click Next. Now we're going to specify our Virtual Machine Manager service account. And it's that same VMM service account that we created. Go ahead and type in the password. Now down here for Distributed Key Management, we created this container in Active Directory already, so we're going to want to specify the distinguished name. And if we go over to where we created it, we can see there it is. I'll just go ahead and copy that and either type it in or paste it in. Let's go ahead and click Next. I'm going to use all the default ports. Go ahead and click Next. Now as far as a new library share goes, we can uh, create a new one or use an existing one. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new one. Let's go ahead and click Next and install. Okay, and it took a little while to install, but Virtual Machine Manager has been installed successfully.